CC Payon, Monarch Magazine's resident master chef and your host for Culinary and Conversations, a live cooking experience where we create nutritious meals for your body and explore topics that nurture your mind. Conversations with some of today's top influencers, ranging from the world of politics, art, film, music, and more. I cannot contain my excitement today. For those of you who do not know, this lady has worked with multiple icons. She is an icon in the making herself. All of these icons that she has worked with sing her praises. Quincy Jones, who is the father of all things innovative, has taken Shalea under his wings and they have made beautiful music together. She's worked with David Foster. She's, she was starred in the Clark Sisters uh, piece on Lifetime magazine. I have known her since she was a wee child and she has grown into an amazing, incredibly talented, vivacious and confident woman. Ladies and gentlemen, the black Barbara Streisand, Shalea Melody Frazier. Welcome, Shalea. <laughs> oh, my Cynthia, what an introduction. Thank you so much. And I don't know what's going on because you look exactly the same, just as gorgeous as you were when I first laid eyes on you when I was a little girl. So I don't, I don't know what's happening. Time is just standing still. <laughs> it is for both of us, but then not. It is so great to have you here. I, I, when we were thinking about people to have on the show, I thought of you. Um, you are somebody who has, you know, there's a verse that I, I know I've shared this with you. Seest thou a man who is diligent in his work, he will stand before kings and not mean men. And mm -hmm. Shalaya is somebody who has been so diligent and who has persevered and who has been persistent in her pursuit of excellence. And she stands before kings and not mean men. And her excellence ushers her into so many different rooms. And you have inspired me. This is happening because I have watched you. So thank you for that. Wow. Well, I am in the presence of a queen right now. So, so thank you so much. I mean, your encouragement over the years has just done more than you will ever, ever know. Thank you. Thank you. So I know all about you. But our viewers may not. So tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, I'm just a simple girl <laughs> from, from Bakersfield, California, who just has always loved music. I mean, my earliest memories are, are literally baptized in music. And so it's all I know. You know, I, I feel like so much of my training uh, ground was the environment was in the church and so i was the church musician at 12 and you know not ever thinking it would be a career um but when i went away to um to school i went to oakwood uh, college it was then college now it's university um and got a degree in music emphasis piano but again not really thinking that i would you know use my gifts in a professional way my my parents are incredible musicians and singers and I just saw them do it in church. And so I thought that's what my journey would be. But I ended up um, joining a group and just being um, in the midst of, of just all things creative, you know, being in the studio and writing and producing. And I just knew at that moment, this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. This wasn't just something I did, you know, on the weekends or, you know, that this, this is, I wanted this to be my lifestyle. And, um, and so, yeah, my, my path just kind of twisted and turned and, um, you know, uh, kind of started off just more on the songwriting producing side and, and God just kind of pushed my path towards being an artist and, and here I am. <laughs> and now actress, like you said, which is crazy. I wow. never thought that. <laughs> but you know, that's how God moves. He, my brother and I have this saying, he blesses first class. He's not gonna give you a mediocre blessing. When you have shown that and you're sincere, he worked. But I never knew that this was not what you always wanted to do. No, no. I, I was not that little girl who grew up, grew up thinking she was going to be, you know, a, a, an artist, a recording artist, or a star, or, any, or anything like that. It was, you know, it's, it's interesting. I, that, what, I look at 
just how social media is now. I look at my my little niece and nephew who are going viral every other week. Oh, yeah. um, but it just wasn't like that, you know, when I was growing up. Or maybe it was, and my parents just had a different way of, of, of parenting, um, which honestly, to be honest, I'm super grateful for. But it, it that was never the focus. It was more about, you know, using your gifts for God. And, um, and to me, I feel like even though um, I'm not necessarily doing uh, gospel music, um, it's more of a lifestyle. It's more of a, um, uh, a mindset for me. Mm -hmm. And I take that with me wherever I go. And I, and I'm, I, and I feel like that's why even so many years later, it's, that's, it's still that pure childlike approach I have to it because I was, it wasn't like, suppose, well, let me just, you know, I didn't have a momager or a dadager who was, you know, at that young age. So it's, it's still very, very pure for me. And I, I'm grateful for that. I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't have it any other way. Wow. That is, that is interesting and beautiful. I had no, I just all, you know, I mean, because of the caliber, I just assumed, well, one time I had a conversation with your father and he said he always knew you would be a singer. And that's why you were named Shalea Melody. They gave you that yes. melody. Yes. Yes. Wow. Okay, well, that's, that's interesting stuff. So, yeah. you know, for people that do not get to where you've gotten to, and that has been their focus their entire life, they've always known that they wanted to see uh, that that's, it's, it's God. And, and, you know, people tell me all the time, you know, like, when did you know that you wanted, you know, that you, I always, I, they say it in different ways, but for me, I always say that music chose me just the just the same way god chose me you know i didn't i didn't have a choice in the matter you know that thing took a hold of me i think even in the womb you know i think um you know we talk about you know that verse you know fearfully and wonderfully made and i i, I feel like even in the womb music was just such a a huge part of of just my identity you know just my mom singing to me and you know even in my baby book you know it'll say at two years old i was harmonizing you know if i saw a two-year-old do that now that would be kind of weird you know at 11 months someone would sing a note and i would sing the exact note um you know as a child i would never bang on the piano i would just always just play very thoughtfully so it was it music was just in me and you know it's 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 honestly the the closest i ever feel to god is is you know, wow. when I'm on stage and I'm creating, it's, you know, it's a beautiful thing. I feel so grateful, you know. Beautiful, beautiful. Wow. <laughs> well, we're going to do a little bit of cooking. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some questions in there while we're cooking, but let's get started. So today we are making, so Shalea is a vegan. Um, so this is a great dish for, this, this is, it's interesting because you are somebody who travels quite a bit. Um, yes. And, and so you can, you can't just go grab a burger and you can't do this. And you have to be really intentional about having to um, You do. Because you need strength to do what you do on stage. I, I would take a lot out of you and then just going to and fro. So this dish is great because it is heart healthy. It is packed with uh, plant protein. It's got all these different layers of flavor in it and it's hearty. Mm. And the star mm -hmm. of this is uh, our chickpeas or our garbanzo beans, and these are high in protein. And the other star of this dish is uh, jerk, Walker's wood traditional jerk seasoning, which I love to make a dressing. So it's gonna be kind of a sweet, spicy, salty mix that's gonna go in this, and it's altogether yummy. So the first thing we're gonna do, I see that you have your, um, and you have your romaine. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, Slice that up and then put that aside so we can put the other things together. Okay. So for your so for your romaine. Oh, that's the cilantro there. Okay, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, this was the cilantro, and 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 I'll I'll just put that to the side. Okay. Um, so here's my romaine here. So all you need to do when you put your romaine is just make sure. What I like to do is I like to roll it. Actually, I've cut this one down, but. What I like to do when I cut my romaine is I just grip it really tight and press down. So the- okay. I'm trying to look, and so, okay, uh-huh. So, grip it really tight. 
Uh -huh. And sometimes I'll just cut off the top part. I'll cut off the top part so I can get a real clean start. So put that, that first top part, cut it off. With okay. your knife. So grip it tight. Yep, yep. Cut off. Just, just cut off the tight part. Okay. Yep. And then move your fingers back and then just you're just gonna make small cuts. Just with a rocking, with a rocking motion, you're just uh -huh. it's like it threaded. Okay. There you go. I need to get some better knives. I do know that. <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. So you're probably gonna like halfway down that stock. That bunch. Okay, about them. halfway, you said. Okay. Yep. Grip it real. Especially since your knife is not as sharp as you would like it to be. Okay, is this enough right here? Enough now. As you now, cut that in half again. So you've cut it long ways, and then so cut it down the center. That. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Okay. Exactly. Because you want to be able to get bites of everything with every bite you take. You don't want to get a little bit of the romaine and the kale and the chickpeas and everything. So I like it to be bites. Right. Right. From that, you can just drop that in your salad bowl that you have right there. Okay. And then we're going to go off the kale. And we're going to do the same exact thing with the kale. Okay. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, Shalea, so now we're doing the kale, right? Okay. All right, so just like how we did the romaine, just grab it tightly and you cleaned off the top. And then okay. just make it small like as you possibly can. Try to make the, the thinnest slices you possibly can. The reason you want to do that is because kale is so hearty that mm -hmm. you comes to it. You want it to be as fine as possible so that the dressing kind of gets in there and softens it and it's it's a pleasant experience versus like punishment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had some tough kale in my day for sure. So um so you said as thin as I can. As thin as you can cut them. And just be careful with your fingers. Okay. Those are the money maker. That's your money with your other money maker. It's so funny you say that. I um, I just posted a video last night. Um, a little, I went live with my followers, and I was just playing this song that came to me, mm -hmm. and um, they're all asking me for a piano album. I'm like, I'm not that good for a piano album. I've always considered myself that I accompany well. Well, I accompany well, but you know, I don't know about just being a flat-footed you know, pianist, so it's, it's, I'm, I'm kind of starting to grow in my confidence okay. in just me playing by myself, you know. You did weeks ago on Simply Genders, hilarious. And I'm trying to remember what it was. It was like, was one on your Insta stories? <laughs> I can't remember what it was. It's, it's, it slipped my mind. But Shalea has a funny bone as well, so. No bad. <laughs> oh wait, was it blocking? He was blessing me. Yeah. Was it the song. Yeah. <laughs> blocking you. I have to give a shout out to uh, Miss Charlene for that. Uh, she wrote that. Oh wow. <laughs> oh like, goodness. Bless you get a lot of blessings for hitting that block button, like. Bump. Honey, honey. Yes. <laughs> I need to tell you. So should I, I? I don't know when I should stop. Should I? I think you've got a good amount there. So now we're going to do just like we did with the romaine. We're going to cut that in half. Okay. Cut it in half. Okay. For thirds, just break it down into smaller pieces. Great. And you know what I think about it? When I think about kale salads, it's like the ones that I really love, they are chopped really well and fine. So it's, it's easier yeah. to chew, you know? <laughs> so... Yeah. All right, so then just drop that, just drop all of that in your bowl, and then with your hands, just kind of mix it up so you've got it even like a, you know, even distribution of that in the, in the romaine. Okay. 
Excellent. Okay. So now, next let's do our, next let's do our dressing. Okay. All right. So for our dressing, we are going to use some gummy jerk. Uh -huh. We're going to add two of the jerk. Uh, teaspoons of the jerk okay. so small spoon and i tell people this is one of those things depending on if you like it spicy if you want it to have more of a jerk flavor use more or less there's no perfect recipe it's what works for you okay so we're going to, i'm going to use about two 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 teaspoons or tablespoons two teaspoons let's start with teaspoons you can always add more two teaspoons of the mild jerk seasoning Okay. Okay. We're going to do a tablespoon of honey. Tablespoon of honey. We'll take a little bit of that heat off. Right. Okay. And then three tablespoons of vegemese. Okay. And then you said three? Three tablespoons, yep. Three tablespoons of mayonnaise. One, two, three. Okay. Excellent. We're going to put it in. We're going to, we're going to use some lemon juice. You can use fresh lemon if you want or bottled lemon juice. And I just use my little strainer if you can do it if you don't have it you can just squeeze your lemon um do you have lemons okay so you can squeeze it and so then you can just squeeze it with the in your hand so it'll get into the mixture okay so just, yeah, squeeze it over your hand and the juice will just go to yep and if any seeds uh -huh. get caught in there oh that's so smart okay so i have a strainer you don't i have a little strainer <laughs> I have to use my brute strength. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there goes a C. Okay. Get out of there. And then okay. mix this together. Just mix it all up. Okay. Now, one of the things I love about this recipe is that I literally don't add any extra salt to it because the the jerk seasoning has a good amount of salt to it mm -hmm. Vegemes also does so we just go with that. now if you want to add a little bit of salt that's fine but i one of the things that people that follow me hear me say a lot is i don't like salt to be an ingredient i like it to be kind of like the finishing thing that goes on the dish maybe brightens the flavors but right salt <laughs> to our dishes. So I, I try to go for that. Right. So we mix that up. And when that looks well combined, let me just taste it for flavor and see if you think it needs a little more um, honey or if you think it needs a little more jerk seasoning. This is when you would do that. Okay. I'm hoping I didn't put too much um, lemon juice. <laughs> No, is it supposed to be? Mine's Can you see little, how it's supposed to look? Mine's a little, mine's a little, it has a little movement to it. It's not thick. Okay. No. Okay. okay. I'm just trying to get the uh, veginase to kind of break down a little bit. Do I want it to be clumpy or no? Um, it doesn't really matter because we're going to mix it in again. What you can do is you can take the back of your spoon. And like, yeah, I'm doing. Yeah, let's decide to get rid okay, of it. Okay, so what about this? Does this, is this looking? Yeah, right? it looks fine. Now, taste okay. to see if you would like a little more jerk flavor or you'd like a little more creaminess for the veganase, then that's when you can add extra. Or you gotcha. want a little more sweetness. Okay, okay, let me see. Let me mix a little bit more. I think it's the most attractive quality for someone who can cook. I was, I was just talking to my mom as you know, I was getting, I was 
getting the groceries and I was like, I wish I had this skill. <laughs> you can it's so attractive. Let me be able to get up on that stage comfortably and blow like you do. I would prove that. <laughs> okay, so she said I should taste a little bit. Yeah, taste it and tell me if you how you think it does it make a little more. Okay, let me see. What how do I taste that? I was gonna just put my lip. What do I do? Just a little Well it's you. So you can you can taste your spoon. Okay, right. <laughs> That's good. It's got a little kick to it, but the honey, I taste all of that. Yep. Okay, so let's put Okay, that I think we're good. Okay, so let's put that aside, and now we're gonna go into our actual, our, 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 like our mixture, our chicken mixture. Okay. So you should have um, your chickpeas, let's put that in a bowl. Okay. And I the whole bowl? The, the whole can? The whole can. Now, okay. I have a potato masher, and that's probably what's easy. There's a couple things you can do. You can okay. do it with a food processor and pulse it if you want to. You can use the potato masher, or you can just use a fork. Okay. I did see this, and I kind of use it in my smoothies. Yeah. That might work. That's for your Vitamix. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't think it's good. Oh, it is going. It's doing it. Yeah. Because see, these are cans, so they're soft. So, you know. And it doesn't have to be completely mashed. I like some, some you know, full peas, some mashed peas, just different things. Mm -hmm. different levels in there. So you just mash it until you feel like it's gotten to the, the breakdown of the consistency that you want. Right, right. I think I'm more of a all of a mash kind of girl. Okay. Yeah, there are people that, you know, we talk about that a lot on the show, that there are people that like a certain flavor, but they may not like the texture. So that's yeah. the person that really, really break it down. I'm a texture person. I love yeah. chunky, all that kind of stuff. So for me, yeah. it's a So, so you probably would be somebody then that would want to use maybe a food processor the next time you made this. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to be um, like a paste. You, it has to have some kind of texture. You wouldn't want it to be a paste, so you're going to put it in your food processor and pulse it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. I think, I, I think, it's, pretty, I think it's pretty good. Let me just, just kind of do a little bit more with the... Yeah, I got it. I got it pretty... Okay, and do I just, um, and then what do I do? Do I pop that in the salad yet or not yet? Now we're going to add in our other ingredients. Okay. Which is, we had two tablespoons of red onion finely chopped. So let's do your red onion. Oh, okay. I need to chop a little red onion then. Yeah, just a small piece. Huh? Just a small piece. Just a small piece, okay. Now, can you can you cut and talk? Can we talk? Have a few more come questions for you? Yeah. Now, should I? Ch how should I cut the onion? Just like, um, just cut the little top off, and then the onion. Ah, you know what I would do? I would just cut right along the side. I would cut like a, a sliver of it, not much. Oh, this way. Yep. Yep. Okay. Just like that. Very Okay. Yep. And that's the, it. it. Take the skin off of it and then just, you know, cut it uh, diagonally and then horizontally. You know, okay. Like that. What you're more concerned about is the consistency and the size of your pieces versus, you know, anything else. It's just because you don't want to have a big chunk and a little chunk of onion. You want them to be consistent. Yeah. Right. And 
I'll probably do it in half again, right? So let me ask you a question. What would you say is the difference? My, brother, my brother's actually visiting now. And oh, yeah, he's Benny, here. my Benny. And we were talking about the difference between a singer and a vocalist. Huh, a singer and a soloist. A singer and a soloist, okay. So you would make that, you would make that. Oh, difference. oh, oh, is, 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 that what you, is that what you said? I, maybe yeah. I missed, you said a singer and a what? Vocalist. Vocalist, vocalist, singer and a vocalist. Hmm. You know, everybody has the gift to sing. Everybody can sing a tune. It, it might not necessarily be in tune, but they have the ability to sing. You know what I mean? So everybody in the world is a singer. Mm. But yeah. when you think about vocalist, vocalist to me, that almost has a built-in connotation that they have studied their craft. Okay. You know, a vocalist is someone who you know, obviously has worked on their vocals and it's, it's not just something they do in their, in their uh, you know, leisure. You know, it might be semantics, um, but I think we all have like certain, like when I hear somebody says, oh, she's a vocalist. That can also mean to me that they don't play an instrument sometimes. So it's a, also a little bit specific, like, okay, the, the, the lead vocalist or she's the, the vocalist that is joining the orchestra or the band or what have you. You know, so I, you know, I think we all have different connotations of, you know, what those words mean. But, um, you know, what's the, what's the difference between a singer and a singer? <laughs> and A. <laughs> you, you're definitely a singer. You so, sang. Sang oh, like you thank do. you. So do you. So you do know, you. We were, I, we were just listening. Um, my family was on our way to Yosemite and um, we were just playing, um, you know, it was just a random mix and even me came on. And um, for those of you who may not know, um, Breath of Life Worship Center, the church that Cynthia and I uh, both used to attend, um, did, a, did a record. My eyes are watering, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't do, is there a trick to that? You know what, the different people say, some people say turn the water on. I think it has to do with making sure you have a really sharp knife. Because when you have a really oh. sharp knife, it, it, you know, it's like when you're cutting with a dull knife, it kind of aggravates it and it's, it, the, the... Well, dull it is. <laughs> yeah. So I need, to, I need to clearly invest in new knives. Okay, so I think I've got enough onion, right? Okay, yep. So just drop that in your bowl with your chickpeas. Okay. Yeah, you have space in there. Drop that in the bowl with the chickpeas. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to do our cilantro. Okay. And um, again, if you can see what I'm doing, I kind of, I, I always like bunch up. Because when it's like, it's just, it's hard to, I have a greater set of control when I, when I put it together like that. So just, just make sure you're doing it right. Mm hmm and then just chop up some cilantro. This is like a quarter cup, I would say. And then mm -hmm. just put that in the bowl. And really fine as well? Yeah, as fine as you can make it. Okay. And about how much, just? Like enough to, about enough to cover your palm, let's say that. Okay. About a quarter cup. That's about enough to cover your palm. Now, if you're a cilantro lover, use cilantro. If you're not, you can use parsley. Something that I always share with people is that cilantro uh, keeps the metals out of your, it fights metals in your body. You know, as we go about the day, there's so many things that we are just, um, we're taking in. And, True. Uh, and so cilantro uh, fights that. Okay, the, we've got two more ingredients that we have to do. We're going to take a, a stalk of celery. Okay. Uh -huh. And I like to, in the stalk, like cut it into thirds or into fourths. And let this- in, Within the stalk? 
yet and let this oh. keep I just let the bottom remain. Should I, should I cut this little part off? I do. Yeah, I would. Okay. Yeah. So just just the large part, hold on to that. And then mm -hmm. just one, two, three cuts, and it'll give you four of these. Uh, so <laughs> let me try again. <laughs> Okay, cut this little part off. I think I got too close to the edge. Let me try to do it in the middle first. So, and, and how far do I cut down? Um, just to like maybe a, a, a half inch from the bottom. Okay. Okay. And then let me cut. All right. And so you've got that. So now, again, we're going to pull like we're going to hold this you see how i have it held like tightly and uh -huh. then we're cut small pieces of this and we're going to cut all the way down to you know where we, we stop the slices okay and once we've done that we're going to drop that in the bowl And then the last thing that we're going to add to this are our green onions or scallions. People use different names for them. Mm -hmm. So just take out one stalk of that. Okay. 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 And then we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to hold it tight and we're going to just cut all the way to, to where we get to the white of the, of the scallion, like the root. We're just going to cut all the way down. And we'll drop that in our bowl. Okay. All righty. So now all we have left to do is add in our golden raisins. We're going to add in golden raisins here, like a quarter cup of golden raisins we're just going okay. to drop so if that's like in my hand what would that be about about your palm about okay. your palm mm -hmm. like the palms worth drop that in there and then we have our pecans you don't have to add them but i like you can use pecans even cashews and again you're going to do like a what you would cup in your hand and just drop that in there okay and now we're going to take, we're going to mix that up using your spoon, just kind of combine that. All right, and then the dressing that we've made, we're mm -hmm. going to drizzle just, we're not going to the dressing. We're just going to drizzle some of that over the top, maybe half of it, and then mix that up. Okay. And then keep mixing. Combined. Of course, you can so keep if you want to, but I like to, you know, you can always add more dressing at the end on the, uh, on top of your, your salad greens. Uh -huh. It smells so good. And then you're ready to you're, you're ready to plate. You should be ready to go. So let's taste and see. Do you think it needs a sprinkle of salt? Do you want a little more dressing on it? Okay, let me taste mm. a little bit. I think that's yummy. I want a little bit more dressing. Okay. But it's so good, though. So, so let's talk about, you know, there's a saying, you are what you eat. So what mm -hmm. do you eat when you're on the road? How do you meet your nutritional needs? 
Well, you know, I just became vegan um, January of 2019. Okay. So that's been, you know, a little over a year and a half. And I found this app called Happy Cow. Oh, yeah. In fact, we, we both know uh, and love Dinesh. Mm -hmm. She um, she also went to our church and great singer, dancer, and all that. Um, she has been vegan, and she put me onto the and to me that was a game changer for me because, you know, when I went to Italy, I found vegan gelato, and I went to Jakarta, I found vegan options everywhere I go. It just shows you wherever you are in the world. It just shows you a radius of where vegan. Um, places are and so you know when I as you said when I'm traveling so much and I spend most of my time in hotels you know that's um it's a challenge to you know to to cook and so that's mm -hmm. why I'm kind of happy about this because it's just kind of awakening something in me that says you know you can I can do this too like I'm I, I'm so dependent on DoorDash and <laughs> things like that to where when, even when I come home, I still continue to do it because it's just a lifestyle thing now. It's just a part of, yeah. you know, it's just, that's just how my day goes. So, um, you know, and then before I was vegan, there was a few dishes that I made like really, really well. Like I, every Thanksgiving, everybody always counted on me to do the macaroni and cheese. It was like the five cheese macaroni and cheese. Like it was so good. Um, I would make, I also made a really great, um, enchiladas you know sour cream all you know so all that stuff i don't eat anymore you know so there's times where i just kind of feel like uh, you know what i what do i really have to offer so this is so kind of this, this is cool for me because it's it's just realizing that i can you know i can actually cook and it still be vegan and still be very tasty i mean this, this is delicious and i'm just you know i would have just picked up the phone and called for a salad <laughs> like this instead of, you know, taking the time to do it and you put the love into it, you know? Good. That's good. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to spoon some of that onto, onto our greens, our salad greens. You have that bowl there. Okay. And we're just going to spoon some of it onto there. Uh, this is the kind of thing you can eat this. Um, on with crackers, you know, like a chicken salad with crackers. Yeah, yeah. You can put it on a soft bun. You can put it on some toasted whole wheat with some avocado and a slice of wheat and cheese. There are many things you can do with it. So how many, how many spoonfuls should I put in it? Um, as much as you want, as much as you want. This is probably enough for like four side servings or two big crackers. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. So I have a little bit of avocado that I'm going to put on mine. Oh, I did have an avocado somewhere. Maybe. I thought maybe I, maybe I didn't grab that one. Okay, no avocado for me on that one. Okay. Well, it's, it's yummy nonetheless. So yes. I'm going to put mine I love avocado. My dish ended up looking like. Can you see that? I can. So pretty. So okay. Chickpea salad. And this will keep in the refrigerator for about, you know, off, off the lettuce, just on its own. It will stay for about three to four days. There's mm -hmm. many ways to use it. It's a great, it's a great addition to your. Uh, food repertoire. So we have a few more questions for you. Okay. This this comes from uh, Will, who is the, the the founder and owner of Monarch Magazine. You are in incredible shape. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> witness. Well, not that I don't. Well, I think so too, but I just think that's funny. Um, <laughs> have health and wellness always been a priority in your life? Hmm. You know, I, I definitely, I feel, you know, we both grew up in um, uh, a denomination, Seventh Day, where we, you know, that was something that was kind of almost built into just our way of life as well, you know. Um, but I will say, 
that had many a potluck. <laughs> it was every unhealthy thing. And so I tell people all the time, you can be vegan, you yes. can be vegetarian and unhealthy. Yes. And, um, you know, so because it can be a whole lot of carbs, a lot of sugar and all that. So I, I, I say all that as a, you know, to, to preface that, to say that, yes, I have made, um, I, I try to make healthy choices. I felt like being vegan was definitely a great choice for me. Um, it kind of started really just, I didn't want to get sick. Mm. I was, it was, it was 20, it was top of 2019. And I had a movie, I had a tour with Dave Cos that was 27 shows in 30 days. Oh, wow. Then I had, um, and then I was gonna go immediately from that tour and do the film, which was gonna be six weeks of shooting. Then right after that, uh, two days, three, maybe three days later, I was gonna start another tour with David Foster. So I looked at that, I was like, okay, I cannot go down. Like there is literally no room for any weakness. So I, I, just, I decided to cut out dairy, cut out sugar, um, bread, and you know, just really eat very simply, very plant-based, mm -hmm. um, you know, because also what I've been learning is there's a difference between being vegan and plant-based. You can be vegan and eat Oreos and yeah. fries and beer and be vegan. <laughs> But plant-based, you know, is, is obviously, you know, what it implies. And so um, at that time, I was, I was just in, in impeccable health. And, and I just loved the way that felt. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just continued, you know, I, the, one of the, the director, uh, Christine Swanson, her husband, Michael Swanson, also an incredible producer, we had gone to dinner at, um, you know, while we were filming. Um, all of us, you know, the cast, and I was telling him about my journey. He was vegan, and he said, um, you know, how's it going? He said, I'm lo loving it, you know, um, but, you know, I had only planned for it to be during that time period. <laughs> I was going to go back to my, my, my old way, still a vegetarian, but, you know, having my dairy and stuff, mm -hmm. and he, I just remember him looking at me. I'll never forget it, and it, it just was one of those moments that it was just like the light bulb went off, and he was like, Shalaya, you're showing yourself that you can already do it. You're doing it. So why would you go back? And although I've heard that so many times, for some reason, it just struck a chord in me. It was like, why would I go back? I feel great, you know? Because um, really, I, I, right now where I'm in my life, of course, we all want to look great and healthy and, 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 and fit and look a certain way. But for me, I just want to feel good. You know, mm -hmm. I want to, I want to feel good 10, 20, 30 years from now. Mm -hmm. And so I decided at that moment, I was going to start investing in myself and, and, and really making myself a priority in my health and, um, and looking beyond right now. And so that was, that was, and I noticed it, it, um, vocally because there was no dairy, um, there was just less flint. And so I feel like there has been just a little bit of an added clarity to even um, vocally um, as an artist, you know, what I'm able to do. So it's been, it's, I, it's, it's been, I've, it, I've enjoyed so much being vegan, but I, I, you know, I went the long round, long way around to say, I feel like you still have to be conscientious about your choices, even while being vegan, you know, because honey, I'm eating vegan, um, cupcakes vegan cinnamon rolls and you know the the vegan chicken and waffles from crossroads you know which is like oh my god it's so good the vegan sundays so you know i still have to ch make choices like these right you know because, and not just be thinking i'm vegan i'm good right it's because it's about eating healthier and you know that's one of the things that i say about a lot of these processed foods yeah process and preservative packs and really the closer you are to eating foods in its natural state the best you are and yeah. so that's why something like this is great because we have veginase in there which is something that's processed but other than that that's it you know so your yeah. body what it needs and it gets rid of the west so let me ask you would you consider yourself a foodie 
I am. I am. I am. Yeah. I mean, I, in, ter in terms of, for what I understood, that's just somebody who loves food, right? Or, <laughs> or who has like a high refined taste for food or, I think or just so likes, to ex food. likes to experience new foods. Somebody just enjoys food. Yeah. 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 I think so. I think so. And I feel like I've become more of a foodie since I've become vegan. Yeah. Well, you grew up in a tradition as we referenced earlier. We grew up in a tradition where we are used to people making entire meals without meat. So we've kind of got a head start on how things should taste. So I, I think we're going to be tougher when it comes to that. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. But I feel like also when I was a vegetarian, um, I don't know. I feel like I ate more of the same thing. Hmm. You like know, like so. So now that I'm vegan, like you have to be almost creative, and even yeah. probably where I am too, being an adult too, where you know I'm I'm traveling too, and so I'm 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 eating food here and there, and just you know, it's just a a fun adventure for me. You know, more I I'm actually having more fun as a vegan than mm -hmm. I did when I was eating all the dairy and and stuff. Because I'm I'm just always so excited when I when I eat something. You know, I'll have like vegan sushi or something or vegan something that i didn't think could be vegan vegan crab cakes i'm just like oh my goodness this is so creative <laughs> you know? so dairy, dairy didn't bother your voice it didn't do anything to you negatively in the, in the past no it didn't it didn't no it didn't milk, milk and dairy makes me congested yeah wow. for most for most people it does i mean I, I remember doing a session back in the day um, where I, a good cheese pizza, ooh, a good cheese pizza right before a session, right? I would order it right before, and those oils would come down. It was probably more of the oil and not the cheese, but the oil, and, and I remember one day I was a little horse and had some pizza, ooh, got me the <laughs> session. But, wow. you know, now I use other methods, you know. Um, honey is also great. You know, I put the honey down and it just kind of, takes all the phlegm and just takes everything down i don't actually swallow it. i just put the honey in and let it let gravity and just it just takes everything down it's kind of uncomfortable but um but that works um i will every in my rider sometimes i will have a lays potato chip that i will kind of suck on and get the oil the oil and the salt mm -hmm. so so i got my little lays now <laughs> okay so here's a question i want to ask you i've always wanted to know this so uh -huh. Who is you are? Who is your favorite artist? Oh, that's so hard. That's so hard. Um, I don't know if I can say. <sighs> or, or give us a couple and tell us why that person is it. Is it their range? Is it the is it their the longevity of their career? Like you, you can give me more. Right, than that. right. I mean, I grew up on groups like the Winans Commission, you know, um, Take Six, you know. So, so to me, I feel like they are a part of who I am even, you know. Vanessa Bill Armstrong, like, you know, they, it, it's like, I feel like they raised me, Yolanda Adams. So it's, it's just so hard for me to pinpoint and just say there's only one that rises above. But when I look at maybe just everything about them and, and who they represent, and maybe because I have had the privilege of, of getting to know him on a deeper level, I would have to say um, Stevie Wonder, you oh. know, um, just because of, not just only because of how prolific he is mm -hmm. as a songwriter, producer, you know, musician, singer. I mean, he's, he's, you know, I always say he's not of this world, but when you get a chance to actually um, experience him, you realize that the way um, my Sharia Amor makes you feel, the way you are the sunshine of my life makes you feel when you listen to it, that's how he makes you feel. Mm. And to me, you know, that's why it's so connected. Um, I've never met someone so full of light and so full of love. Um, I've been knowing him now. Um, I think we met 
it was uh, 2000, it was like around September of 2008. Okay. So, so that, that's been some time now. I have never, ever heard him um, say anything unkind about anyone, about a situation. He will speak truth to it. He will make, you know, he'll talk about what it is, but, it, but never in an unkind, uh, mean-spirited way. And I, I, just, I just feel like that is, that is just such a beautiful, beautiful quality. And, 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 and that is why God has imparted so much light in him because he knows how much we need it, you know? Beautiful. Beautiful. So, I, 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 I know of your relationship with him. I, when I thought about this question, I didn't, um, he didn't even come to mind, even though I, he is everything that you say. I, I, would, I would have thought you would have said something like Whitney. Yes. Well, she's, she's up there, too. She's up there, too. But I think maybe it's the personal relationship. Yeah. 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 But, but, you know, Whitney, Whitney has been such, uh, you know, again, you know, a part of me, you know, and it's, it's just crazy how God works, how so many people that were in her life are in my life, you know, like Kirk Whalum, you know, I toured with him. Um, for so many years, that was who who played the saxophone. On I will always love you. Was toured with her for many many years. Uh, Ricky Minor, you know who was her MD. He has been an angel in my life. I mean, I could literally go down. Even even the last person who did her makeup before she passed away, he has done my makeup. And so it's just I, it's this weird uncanny thing. I I feel this this spiritual connection with her, even though we never got a chance to meet and you know when I did her I did a tribute to her when she passed and her daughter may she also rest in peace Bobby Christina you know reached out and said when I hear you sing I feel my mother's spirit with me you know and if and if she were here today she would be so proud of you you know um so that that I I I, I you know even though I didn't get to meet her I in some way I feel like I did you know through her daughter Beautiful. Wow. So, last question. If you were stranded on an island, mm -hmm. you would take five CDs with you. Ooh! What would they be? Oh, my God. That is such a good question. That is such a good question. Oh, my God. Ooh! Okay. Okay, it would have to be, oh, it might have to be some greatest hits kind of album. <laughs> I'm going to do all greatest hits albums, okay. Um, it would have to be um, a greatest hits whinings because they, I, oh, especially, you know, their, their, their earlier records. I mean, those, those, the Light Years, the Light Years album of whinings. Okay, that's one. Um... Okay, which Stevie Wonder album would I do? I mean, I know everybody loves, the, you know, everybody has like, you know, the Inner Visions and Talking Book. They're all so good, but there's something about this album that I love. It's called um, uh, Where I'm Coming From. Mm. And it is such, it's it, to me, that was the beginning of him coming into his own. You know, when you listen to his, like his really, really earlier records, like you hear the Motown influences, you know, you hear, you hear that Motown machine. But from where I'm coming from, that's when he, he really started to become, in my opinion, Stevie Wonder and not Lil Stevie, you know. Um, so that, that album is just so important. That has, that song has, um, I think of me, girl, as you're so chill. I mean, I just love that song. And I asked him later on, I said, you know, I can tell where you, if I have this weird thing where I, I could tell where he was emotionally. And I said, you were, I said, it, to me, when I listened to that album, it sounds like you were so in love. You were so in love. And he was like, I was so in love. So I just, I can hear it. I can actually hear it. Um, so I love that album. Okay, so that's two. Um, 
I would have to say, and this is not just because he's your brother, but take six, uh, so much to say. Okay. Um, that is, wait, wait, that's one with gold mine on it, right? I think gold, gold mine. The first one. So that was their self-titled take six, right? Yes. yes. So that one. So that one. Take six. Mm -hmm. um, ooh. Okay. 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 Um, so I said Stevie Winans take six. I would have to say Whitney Bodyguard. Okay. Just because that's just that's just such a brilliant record. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, who really, who feeds my soul? Like, my soul. Like, if I'm stranded, I'm going to need some soul. <laughs> oh, man. Um, mm. Marvin Gaye, I want you. Hands down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give you something for everything. Like, you know, when I'm feeling in, like, a sexy mood, I need the I want you. Yeah. You know, when I need the Lord to just lift me up. You know, I'm gonna go to the wine. You know what I'm saying? Hey, when I want to be happy, that's Stevie. You know, so I we we got it covered. We got it covered. Wow, those are some those are some great choices. And I think <laughs> I'm going to check out Stevie because for me, it's like talking book songs in the keys of key of life. Yes, there are songs of Stevie's that I just when I want to cry. Yes. <laughs> yes. That, yeah. I mean, the emotion yeah. in that song. I yes. was going to break up once and I, was, I had it on repeat. I was like, I want to cry. <laughs> I want to get this out. <laughs> wow, wow. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness, this has been so great. This has been so great. I hope you enjoy your salad and your leftovers. Um, and I Yes, hope mine isn't as pretty as yours, but I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so thank you so much for taking time out for us. Um, we appreciate it. Monarch Magazine is a magazine that it embodies someone like you, someone who mm. is a polished, driven, focused, professional, um, you know, really making inroads. And we like to bring people's attention. I don't know how somebody would not know of you, but if they <laughs> did, never do you. go check her out. Shalea, his, she earns the praises of David Foster, of uh, uh, Quincy Jones. I mean, she's talked about Kirk Whalum. I, I've seen you on the road with Kirk Whalum. You are one of these rare artists for me, I think, because there are people that are vocalists, there are people that are like pianists. Uh -huh. You have the ability to do both exceptionally well. And I think that that's what makes you stand apart. You know, you can rip if you have to, but you can also, and she can play in any key. <laughs> I've done things at church with her and she's got the chops. It's not, you're not just beautiful. You're not just a great singer. You really are the whole package. And she is as sweet as she comes across to be. Um, this is who she is. This I've known her. I know her mama. I know her daddy. I know her sister. <laughs> <laughs> this is who she is. So thank you so much for taking the time this afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And thank you for just being a presence in my life. You know, I have admired you um, for so long, not just, you know, I, I just, just your beauty, you know, that is what takes my breath away, but you are just, you know, so encouraging and so genuine, you know, and, um, you realize how rare that is as you get a little older, you start to, to peep out a few things. And so it's, it's, it's nice to have people who, you know, who are genuine, are going to keep it real with you, um, someone that you can be honest and transparent with, and you have always been that for me. So um, thank you for, for being one of uh, my number one cheerleaders. I love you so much. I love your whole family, you know, um, and so I, it was an honor to do this with you. 
All right. Well, everyone, <laughs> thank you for joining us for Culinary and Conversations. Shalea Melody, Melody Frazier, uh, songstress, <laughs> vocalist, extraordinary, and actress. And, and actress. actress. <laughs> we'll see you next time, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.